Hi guys, my name is Angel. I'm a director of photography and DI colorist based here in Mumbai, India. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, I covered some simple editing techniques. And in this video, I'm going to continue further into that topic. So let's jump into the computer and let's get started. Okay, so this is the timeline that we were working on in the previous video. We have cut and joined some clips. Now, before we go further, let's just uh, make some new video tracks. Let's stack some clips on top of each other. For that, let's just take this clip. When you hover, it will automatically create a video to an audio to. We're going to always choose to override the clip if you want to remove it by just dragging and putting it on top. But that's not what I want to do. I want to create a third video layer as well. So let's drag it and take it upwards so that it creates a video track three and audio three. So now I have three clips. Let's see if uh, this clip can be a little bigger. Okay. So now, as you can see, these three clips are of different lengths. What if I want to chop them together at this point, at the shortest duration? For that, I can do multiple things, obviously, as we have seen so far. Let's drag the mouse and make a selection. Now, since I want to affect only these two clips, I can leave this one out. Or I can choose and drag everything together. It won't matter because there is nothing to chop on that clip. Now, as you can see, when you make a selection of the video track, the audio related to that track automatically gets selected. It happens because this chain icon is clicked. It's the link button, basically. If you uncheck it, then when you select a video track, it will only select the video and it will only affect the video as well. But let's keep the chain on for right now. Let's make this selection again. Now with everything selected, I can hold control and hit backslash to make a chop. Now I can make a selection again, this time leaving the original clip out and I can press delete to remove them. But let's do undo and undo again so that there is no cut in between. Now I wanted to show you one more shortcut, which is very cool in my opinion with control shift and the right bracket key. I can make a chop very easily without any additional step. I don't have to drag and make a selection once again. So this happens because uh, DaVinci is taking the command with these bracket keys. If I uh, use the close bracket, then it will chop them from right. If I use the open bracket, then it will chop it from left. For example, if I want to uh, remove this part, then I can use control shift and the open bracket key it will ripple the clips all together as well. And the portion which was on the left has now been eliminated. So let's go a few steps back. Now let's, let's suppose that I want to make a chop on this clip only. So with that clip selected, with only that clip selected, if I press control and backslash together, it will only create a cut on that particular clip. Now I can move it around, I can delete it, I can put it on a different track, or let's just remove it. Now, with that uh, third clip left, I can use the handles and put them where I want them to be. Now, this, these all are very efficient ways of editing a clip. Okay, now suppose I'm on this second last clip. What if I want to uh, make a selection of this clip and every clip that is in front of it? like that is in the right side of the timeline. For that, I will hold Alt and press Y. It will make a selection of all tracks and of every clip which comes after this particular clip that I have my playhead on. Now, this can also act in reverse if I hold Alt Control this time with Y. It will make a selection of every clip from the clip I am on till the very beginning of the timeline. So it will leave every clip which comes after it. So uh, let's uh, select every clip after this once again with Alt and Y. If I want to keep only this last portion of the clip, let's press Control Shift and the open bracket. It will ripple everything because I have selected everything in front of it as well. Now uh, let's drag another clip 
which is one of my favorite clips from that day. I am not making a selection right now. I am just dragging everything. Okay. Now, in this beautiful clip of waves, there is a bird. There is a crow, actually, somewhere. Here it is. So, for example, I make a cut just before the crow comes. So, if I want to trim the portion on right, I will press Ctrl, Shift and the close bracket. Now, it has trimmed everything that's on the right. Now, what I want to show is how you can duplicate a clip on the timeline itself. I don't have to go to the media pool, make another selection or make a sub clip. I don't want to do all those things. I want to make a duplicate. For that, I can do two things. I can click on the clip that I want to duplicate. I can hold press control with C, which is copy. And now I can paste it. But to paste it, I want to have a selection on my timeline. So for that, uh, because I want to paste it just after this clip, I will press I. Now it has made an indefinite selection. So I just need a selection which is bigger than the length of this clip. So for example, if I uh, let it be, or if I make a selection which is just big enough for the clip to exist, then I will press Ctrl and V. It will make a duplicate. The easy way of doing so without making all these markers and everything, I can just hold on to Alt and with the clip selected, I will just uh, drag it and make a different copy of it. Now, since I want to make the crow come back, I will just extend it a little bit so that my crow shows up. Okay, the crow has come. Now I'll go to the point where the crow hasn't come yet. Okay, so just about here. Now, control shift and open bracket. It will chop it to the point where the crow has just start showing up. Okay, so these are some ways of copying and cutting and chopping your footage. Now, let's see. Let's come back to these layered clips. Now, for example, if I want to uh, use all of these three videos, but I want to remove the audio of these uh, two tracks. Now, when I'm making a selection, it is selecting the video as well. So if I delete them, it will delete everything. So now we have two ways to do so. We can uncheck this chain button, then select this audio and press delete, or let's do control Z to undo. So. If I don't want to use the chain icon again and again, if I don't want to disable it and enable it again, I can just hold on to Alt and with the simple click, I can select only the track that I am clicking on. Now, I can also choose to click another uh, audio track along with it. For that, I will need to uh, also hold Control along with Alt and then click on it. Now, I've selected these two audio layers. Let's delete them. Now, one another way of doing so hold alt again and make a selection with the mouse now because i have uh, hold on to the alt button it won't select my video this time now i can choose to delete it or trim them using the handles or let's make a selection again or we can just uh, make a cut by control and slash but what if what if i have the selection on and if i do control shift and open bracket let's see what will happen Okay, so now we have trouble. We have moved the clips that were uh, on a different layer, on a different track. So sometimes you have to be very careful with the shortcut control shift and bracket keys because it can ripple things in a way that you don't want to. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about frame by frame moving of clips. So I have gone all the way in on my timeline. I can use my arrow keys to go frame by frame. As you can see, the crow has started to show up. Okay, now if I want to move this clip to that frame, let's just use my mouse. When I drag it, nothing is happening, nothing is happening. And it jumped three frames altogether. That's exactly what I don't want. I want to move it just one frame. So I have two ways of doing so. Let's press Ctrl and Z. I can put my playhead onto that exact frame. If the mouse doesn't let you go by the arrow key. But now when I move the clip, it will magnet it to that frame. That's easy. Another way of doing so is having the clip in selection and now using the period and comma key, 
I can move this clip one by one, one frame at a time. I can go left with the comma and with the period button, I can go right. So now uh, what if I want to put this clip in the place of these multi tracks and put them here in between these two uh, shots of the scene. For that, I can obviously make a selection, put it here first, right? Take this, take it here, select it again. Wow, so much of work. Let's uh, go back. Now I can just make a selection of this clip. Now holding the control and shift, I can just drag it. Go far, go far, go far, go far. That's, that's almost like magic. It just swaps place very easily. Okay, so in the previous video, we saw that every clip has some handles. Now, if you are in the selection mode with A, you can see that there is a handle on each sides and there is a double handle when you hover around between any two clips. Now, I can make a clip smaller from both ends or I can make it larger or longer by just dragging to the right. But then it makes this clip smaller. If I, if I want to make this clip small again, then it will leave an empty space in between. For that, I can choose to have the two handles. And when I use that, it will drag the clip which is surrounding it again back to its original place until it has enough frames to go on. What if I want to keep the duration or the length of this clip intact and I still want to make this clip longer or simply I can press T or go to the trimming mode. Now, when I use this handle to make it longer, it will just drag all of the clips after that clip and make space for it, which is very cool. I can do the same to go back. I can go back as much as I want and it will just drag everything back. Now, this is what the trimming mode can do for you. Now, what if instead of making this clip longer or shorter, I want to have this duration of this clip, but I want to change it to a different part of the shot. For example, if you remember, there was a crow flying by. What if I want that particular part to come here? For that, I don't have to do any extra effort. Let's just be on the trim mode or with the T key. You can see the handle icon is different on both sides. And when you hover in the middle, the icon is different with these two arrows, basically. With that, let's hold on to it with the left mouse button and drag the mouse left. As you can see, you will start seeing some um, additional windows. The window on the top left corner will be the in point of that clip. The window on the top right corner will be the end point of that clip. The window on the left bottom will be the clip before this clip and the window on the right bottom corner will be the clip after this clip. Let's drag until we start seeing the bird appear on the left top window because that will be the starting point of this particular shot. As you can see, it has started to appear. Let's go just a little back. Okay, perfect. Now, as you can see, the right, now as you can see on the top right window, the bird is not exiting the frame yet, which means this clip is not long enough for that bird to uh, exit the frame. But our in point is perfect now. As you can see, if I start dragging just a little bit more, then the bird will start appearing. I don't want the bird to appear in the middle already. I want it to enter the frame. So I'll and drag in the opposite direction until I just have it out of the frame. Perfect. So my endpoint is now great. I can drop, I can leave the mouse now. And on the first frame, when I use my arrow keys to uh, move frame by frame now, I can see that with just one frame, my bird is entering. So now uh, my endpoint is perfect. But when I go to the last frame, with the arrow key, I will uh, go to the last frame of the clip. I can see that the bird is not exiting yet. Now, to make it exit and not change the duration of any extra clip, I will stay on the T mode. I will go to the very edge of the clip. With this icon, with this handle, I will move it. And in the window, in the left window, when I see the bird exited completely, I will drop my mouse. So now I have the perfect duration for the bird to enter correctly 
and exit the frame as well. So this is how you use the trim mode. So I hope this was a good lesson for you guys. I hope to see you in the next video. I'm going to continue from where we have left in this one. Thank you so much for watching this video.